What do you think is responsible for your success? Um, look, I'm a huge believer in myself. Um, there's nothing that I don't think I can't do. Um, if if I have questions, I'll go ask. I have, I'm so humble enough to ask somebody who's way more intelligent than me, what do you think? Uh, give me your assessment. Um, and I've been extremely lucky like that, and I've surrounded myself with some wonderful, wonderful people. I mean, you know, I, I've been very lucky where I can pick up the phone and call the President of the United States or an ex-president and say, how are you feeling? Um, or some of the great CEOs of the world. I've, I've, I've been very lucky like that. And to any young kid out there in any sport in, or in any aspect of life, if you have the, the access and the ability to reach out to somebody who's got 35, 40 years of experience on, uh, above you, God, you better do it. Because it'll help you um, untap so many unknowns within yourself. And I enjoy doing that now. I don't do a lot, but I'm enjoying working with a couple of guys right now that I really, really enjoy seeing their success just get a little bit better, a little bit better. Maybe just because of one thing I said. And that to me uh, is as rewarding as winning any golf tournament. You were repped by the you know, famous sports management firm, uh, you know, IMG, which you know, has represented everybody from Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer to Peyton Manning to Roger Federer, uh, you, know, you name it. Um, tell about uh, you know, the, the plan you created in 1993 and then why, uh, on the business end, and why you really accelerated that. Pure and simple, when you're an athlete growing up and you get to a certain level, um, and there's very few athletes get to experience this, because I would say the top 10 maybe in the world uh, get to experience it, where you actually get a significant uptick in your endorsement. Um, and during that time where I was getting a significant uptick in my endorsements when I was under a management firm, I was starting to realize that I was putting a lot of value and equity in other people's brand for a reason. They were paying me, I was wearing their logo, blah, 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 and they were getting great exposure because I was playing pretty darn good golf and I was on TV X number of seconds per day or minutes per day. Um, so they spent all this money on you to get this exposure because you're on the golf course, but I really didn't get anything out of it except dollars. Like, great, that, that's what you want. I didn't want that. I wanted to build equity in my own brand. So how do you build equity in, equity in a brand when you don't even have a brand? Um, then, lo and behold, comes uh, Reebok comes along and they want to start Greg Norman Collection Clothing. We formulate the Shark logo. One thing leads to another. Paul Feynman, who owned Reebok at the time, he says, that is your property. You own that logo. I'm going to license that off you, and you're going, to, you're going to go and build that into your future. This is your equity, and you're going to put value in your own equity. So that's how it all started. So when my contract with my management company was coming up um, 1992, 93, I decided not to renew. And at that moment, I had to step out. And I had to capitalize everything myself. And now you better be a believer in yourself. Once you open that door, you better that cash is going out. You better stab yourself pretty darn quickly to get some cash coming in. Um, so I did. One of your first big deals was investing $2 million in golf club manufacturer Cobra. Mm -hmm. um, how did the deal come about? and? How well did it end up working out for you? Well, it worked out fantastic, but before we get to the fantastic side, um, I had befriended a gentleman from Australia called Tom Crow. Uh, Tom Crow was kind of like the patriarch of our golf uh, from our country. He, he was just uh, passionate about the game and passionate about designing golf clubs. Um, I think it was like the 87, 86, 87, Tom came to me and asked me if I would like to invest into his company. And his company at that time was doing about $43 million a year gross revenue. But they didn't have enough capital to invest into research and development. Um, and 
part of the stipulation was uh, I wanted the money to, as I said, go into research and development. Now, at that time, there was a unique opportunity because Callaway just came out with the big Bertha driver, the oversized driver, but they weren't following it up with the oversized irons. So we looked at this opportunity. If we can come up with a great oversized iron, let's go to the market with it straight away. We did. And we came up with the King um, Cobra oversized irons, not just for the general public, but for the seniors and the ladies. And it was a massive hit. So good luck, good judgment, right money at the right time, combination of everything. It just took the company to another level. All of a sudden, we had this huge, huge momentum going our way, and I was playing well, and I was number one player in the world, and you know, all of a sudden, Cobra was like the name. King Cobra was the name. It was out there. And, and then we were eventually acquired by another company for, I think, $750 plus million. So we actually, we all did pretty good out of it. How, how much did the couple million bucks tr translate to? Wasn't it like... Some forty million, yeah, or some, 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 more, and then you use that. that to then invest into yeah. the, the business that you were in the process of build, building, building for up, building up. yourself. My, I reinvested the money, right. um, and it may obviously took, takes a lot of pressure off too. Right. Um, but at the same time, um, in those days, it was a massive deal. I mean, it was a massive deal to see a company that Tom Crow had started with one golf club turn up. You know, just three quarters of a billion dollars in a period of maybe less than 10 years. So it was an eye opener for all the other manufacturers, which was fantastic because at the end of the day, the consumer are the benefactors.